Well, hey, 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 folks. How are you? Thanks for coming back for this episode of In The Loop TV, hosted by myself, Don Grant, CTC, Cutting Tool Counselor, here with another great episode of In The Loop TV, sponsored by the old Harvey Performance Company. Thanks for coming back, but before I get started, I decided I'm not gonna say anything here, okay? I say this on every episode, and I'm not gonna say it this time. See, I didn't say it that time. This is a great episode. It's gonna be a lot of fun because the last episode we talked about doing a series on ball, nose, end mills, which has to do with 3D surfacing and getting a bunch of contours and doing all that kind of stuff. Well, this is a continuation of that and we're gonna give more information on ball, nose, so when we get to the end of the series, we can put it all together and get those surfaces that you demand for your customers at your spindle and your shops and you understand everything we're trying to explain. So this one, what are we gonna talk about? Something very important that has to do with ball nose end mills and it's called effective diameter. Ball nose end mills have something called an effective diameter. We're gonna talk about that. I'm not gonna talk about it now, we're gonna talk about it Next. So thanks for coming back on this episode of In The Loop TV where we are talking about something called effective diameter. Ball nose end mills have something called effective diameter when they're in use. There's other types of end mills, and we'll explain a little bit on this episode, that you need to understand this term when you're programming called effective diameter. Now, when we're gonna talk about effective diameter, what we have to do is we have to start at the beginning, and I promise I will not bore you, but we're gonna get into a little bit of math. And we're not gonna do it here. We're gonna run, we're gonna run to the shop, and we're gonna talk about it next. Well, hey, thanks for coming back. I'm actually happy you came back because I mentioned math, and sometimes that'll probably get a lot of followers and people that are watching might go running to the hills and say, I don't wanna learn about math. Trust me, this math equation that I'm gonna speak about has a lot to do with effective diameter, but understanding when we get into what I mean by effective diameter, we have to understand one simple equation. Now let's go back to the beginning. When we're running end mills and drills and anything, there's something called surface footage, right? SFM. We have to calculate what the SFM and the surface footage is on our tool in order to cut whatever material most efficiently. Because the surface footage is generating the heat at the outside diameter and that's very important to use it in a cutting tool effectively. It's the same thing with a ball nose. So understand this equation I'm gonna give you. We're trying to figure out what RPM is. So in order to use our surface footage to figure out RPM, here is the equation. Now again, don't, don't get excited. You don't need to remember this equation, but you need to understand how to calculate RPM because there's one term in that that's very important for this effective diameter conversation. So in order to calculate RPM on your tools, no matter what tool it is, it is the surface footage, whatever that is for your material, let's say 200, that's our surface footage, we're trying to figure out RPM, 200 surface footage times a little number that I like to call 3.82. I think everybody calls it 3.82, but I like to call it 3. Point, I hesitate, 82. So surface footage, 200 times 3.82 divided by the diameter of your tool. Divided by the diameter of the tool. Everybody understand that? That's gonna give you your RPM that tells you how fast to spin that tool to plasticize the chip, get your right heat at the cutting edge, and get the tool to last long enough. 
So let's look at that formula again. Again, you don't have to remember it. You can. But in order to calculate RPM at your spindle to run your tools, you need to go surface footage, whatever we recommend as a company, times 3.82 divided by diameter. We got that? Now we can run, we can figure it out, we can run with that equation, and now we can understand what effective diameter is and how we use it with a ball nose to put everything together to get the best surface we possibly can, right? Okay, so we just talked about that formula. Only thing you really need to understand in there is everything is divided by the diameter. So if you're using a half inch tool and you're using the side of it, you need to divide it by a half inch tool. Ah, but if you watch the last episode and we take a look at a ball nose, which is used for surfacing, if we drop this ball nose down to do a light surface and you see the full radius that's on the bottom of that ball nose, we're not buried in the material all the way to the sides of the tool. So if we drop that ball nose down 10, 15 thousandths, essentially the diameter that is in the material is less than the diameter of the OD of the tool. Essentially being called the effective diameter. Whatever material is in your tool, and we got an irregular shape, right? We got a radius on the bottom, which means the part of that radius that's going to be into your material is called effective diameter and that's how we need to calculate our rpm in order to get that tool to cut most efficiently now as we know if we take that tool and that ball nose and we start uh, dropping it further down the effective diameter starts growing all the way up until it gets to the od of the tool Let's say this is a half inch OD tool, which means it's a 250 radius or a half inch ball on the end of it. If we just go down 15 thousandths, our diameter is one diameter, effective diameter. Now, if I take that tool and I drop it down 30 thousandths, my effective diameter grows. So now it's getting larger. So that calculation that we figured out for figuring out what RPM we want to run that tool is very important with a ball nose because when you're doing surfacing, you want to calculate your RPM based on your effective diameter. It's a lot of syllables, spit them all out, but you want to figure out how deep you are to base what your effective diameter is on that tool. Now, if we just take that knowledge that I explained on effective diameter, and that's to get your RPM, right? Everything that we do is based on a surface foot, but when we're trying to calculate what our RPM is, it has to be on that diameter. So we really want to find out what that diameter of your cutting tool is immersed in your material, and that's the calculation you want to do. Now, I'm just going to go a little bit sideways on that. Let's think about this, all right? We're talking about a ball nose, and we know how that ball nose we're not really going that deep to get the best surface. It's the same thing applies for chamfer cutters. If we look at a chamfer cutter, your effective diameter, if you buy a half inch chamfer cutter and you use the bottom tip of that tool, the effective diameter is not a half inch, is it? Your effective diameter is what's immersed in the material. So it's very important to do that calculation based on what diameter is immersed in the material in order to get the right surface foot at that diameter to create the right RPM to get the tool to work most effectively. Now, when you're looking at a ball nose, let's say that we're taking a half inch ball nose and we're going in titanium. Now you might think that you're gonna be running a lot slower RPM, but remember, it's calculated by that effective diameter. So we can bring our RPM up. And of course, if we bring our RPM up, we get to calculate that by a chip load inch per tooth, which is based on RPM. So we get to feed it a lot faster. That's why when you're doing these surfacing moves, which are smaller axial depths and smaller radial steps, we get to excel our speeds and feeds a lot more because of our effective diameter is a lot less. 
So now you might be saying, okay, that's great. So now I take a ball nose, depending on what the diameter is, I drop it a certain depth, and I need to now calculate based on the effective diameter. Well, Mr. Ketting Tool Counselor, how do I figure out what that effective diameter is? Well, first of all, there's a formula to figure that out. I'm gonna put the formula right here, and you can stare at it for about as long as I did and go, that seems a, a little bit confusing and I don't wanna do that calculation every time. And trust me, you don't have to do that calculation. We have on our webpage in the resources and on our articles and blogs, uh, blogs as far as that goes, you can find out there is a cheat sheet of how deep you go with the diameter and what that effective diameter is. Now that's another way you can do it. Now the easiest way, and here we go again. We all seem to get back to the same spot. You can use our Machining Advisor Pro. You can take any ball nose that you have in our catalog, put that EDP number in there, and it will calculate what your surface foot needs to be based on your axial depth and how much of that diameter is actually immersed in the material. It'll figure it out for you. It's a simple way to do it. but. You can find the resources, you can find out what the calculation is for the effective diameter. You can use our cheat sheets, that'll tell you what the effective diameter is, or you can use our Machining Advisor Pro. Okay, so let's close on this one. Let's close on effective diameter and let's understand this. It is very important when you're using any cutting tool to make sure you calculate your RPM based on the diameter that's immersed in your material. Okay, that's a drill, that's a chamfer cutter, that's a reamer, that's a ball nose, that's any type of tool that when you have a surface, if you're not at the diameter of the OD, keep in mind, whatever that effective diameter is, is what you want to calculate your surface foot and your RPM based on in order to make that tool cut most efficient. Well, folks, that was a lot. That was a lot to digest on effective diameter. A little bit of math involved, but like I said, just use the map, Machining Advisor Pro. Please use it. It's there for your pleasure. We don't charge anything for it. You can use it free of charge with all of our products that are in our catalogs, and we appreciate you doing that. So that's another little tidbit on ball nose end mills and surfacing. We have to calculate based on the effective diameter. So hopefully you learned something. I hope you come back for the next episode because we're going to talk a little bit about chip thinning with a ball nose end mill because we have some chip thinning, which helps us be more efficient. We're also going to talk about something that you might not understand. But if you get a four flute ball nose and you're doing surfacing at three axes, how do you make all those four flutes cut efficiently? No, that's, that's a question. How do you get, no, I know the answer. You might know the answer, but if you don't, you're gonna wanna come back for the next episode. Thanks for joining me on this one. Really appreciate it. Before I go though, there's three guarantees in life, death, taxes, and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week, folks.